Hey, Allison, I'm a reading specialist and the author of the blog Learning at the Primary Pond, which focuses on K2 literacy. And in this live video, I'm going to share a little bit with you about the free website Epic, which is an amazing tool for teachers. Gotta love free stuff. They're always adding new features. And even if you've been using Epic for a while, I'm going to share with you some ideas to help you um, just use it in a different way and use it for more than just a listening center. Because when I first learned about Epic, I really did view it as something for the listening center because kids can listen to books um, and watch books, see the pictures and everything. But Epic is so much more than that. And even though it is amazing for the Listening Center, there's just so many more things that you can do with it. And that's really what I'm going to show you tonight. I'm going to show you all the cool new features, some of which you may not even know about. So I'm super excited to share all of this with you. As everybody's coming in, I would love to have you just type in the chat box what grade you teach, and then also if you use Epic or not, because I know more and more people use it, but there are still teachers out there who haven't heard of it. So I would love to hear if you use Epic or not. So if you're not familiar with Epic at all, real quick, um, again, it's a totally free tool for teachers. This is something that you can sign up for at getepic.com. You can kind of see what you see on the screen when you first go to the site and then you would sign up from there. Um, I'm not gonna show you how to do that because it's really self-explanatory. You do have to give your school name as far as I can tell, but I teach it like a really small school and that was still able to find it, so that was awesome. Signing up is super easy and again, it is totally free for us to use as educators. Hey, Lindsay, Lindsay's a first grade teacher who loves Epic, me too, Lindsay. All right, so that's just basically what it looks like when you go to the page, sign up, get your free account. I highly, highly recommend doing it as soon as we're finished here. But then once you log in, now your screen may look a little bit different and that's because Epic is super uh, customized. It's basically like Netflix for children's books is I believe what they've said. And if you use the real Netflix, then you know that when you log into Netflix, you see things that are specifically tailored to your interests and you know the kind of things that you watch. And that's basically what Epic does, but with kids books. And so when you log in, you're gonna see something different than what I see. This particular account is just a demo account, so I don't have all my students' names in there. This is really just to show you, um, but yours is going to look a little bit different. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some cool features that are gonna help you accomplish all kinds of things. Um, these little features that I'm gonna show you and the tools that Epic has will help you engage your reluctant readers, always a big one, um, help your kids expand their vocabulary, help you support your English language learners, assign differentiated independent work. Uh, can I get an amen if you are always struggling to do that because it takes up so much time, Epic makes it really easy. You can use Epic to help your kids do research projects, which I love to do, and it really empowers the kids. They love learning about a topic, but at primary, I have so much trouble finding books that the kids can actually read at their levels to do research for nonfiction. Um, so Epic can help with that. I'll show you how. Epic can help with fluency practice. I'll show you that, too. And it also has a tool that's really great for you and your kids to work on visualization and listening conversation. So I'm going to show you all of this. Looks like we have a lot of Epic lovers. Paula has not used Epic. Highly recommend it, Paula. Um, Lillian, hopefully what I share with you about Epic will inspire you to use it more because there's just so many amazing things that you can do with it beyond just a listening center because it is a great tool just for listening center and it's free again, which is amazing. All right. Also, I do want to say real quick before we really dive in and I show you all this stuff, feel free to let me know if there are other you know, features that I'm not mentioning or things that I'm missing. I am a reading specialist. And so even though I'm going to talk about how you can use it in the classroom, there may be things that you use in a different way. So I'd love to get your input as well. Okay. So again, this is what you sign in and you see it. It's going to look different. It's customized to you, which is awesome. Now, I want to show you the Explore tool, and if you've used Epic before, you may or may not have seen this, but right up here, hopefully you can see this okay, there's a little Explore tool, and as a teacher, this is amazing for you. 
So let's say that you are looking for books for a particular group of kids or just one kid and you want a specific Fountas and Pinnell reading level. Now, when I set up my account, I was able to say, do I want FNP? Do I want Lexile? Um, there might have been DRA, I forget. You can let me know if, if I have missed something, but you can customize by what level you want to search by, which is amazing. And so you can kind of search by bands. And then when you click on a book, it will show you the level in the leveling system that you chose, which is super awesome. Oops, it's reading to me. Oops. We don't want to listen to that right now. Um, so you can search by level, which is super because that can be something that's tedious when you're looking to find something specific. Um, and as I'll show you later, you can actually assign specific books to specific kids. So when you're looking to have a child reading in a certain level, that's amazing because, of course, yes, you want them to choose their own books. But sometimes you have a kiddo who is consistently trying to read books that are way too easy or way too hard. And so if you're able to assign a few of those books, even though you're still giving them choice as well in their independent reading, that goes a long way. And that falls under the differentiating instruction or not differentiating instruction, but differentiating independent work thing that I mentioned earlier, because this is something reading these books, taking the quizzes that I'm going to show you. This is something that the kids can do on their own. And because you can assign books at specific levels to your kids, that's a really fast way to differentiate. You're not having to like prepare a bunch of materials that are differentiated. It's super great. But I kind of get off on a tangent. Um, what I was showing you is what you can search by in this Explore tab. So yes, you can search by reading level. That's amazing. You can also search by topic, which is so great if you like to integrate your science, your social studies into your literacy block, which I know I do because time is so precious. So if you, for example, are studying animals and their habitats, you can search by that and find all these books you can also look for a level that's good for your kids. You can maybe use this up on the interactive board for shared reading. And voila, you have a book that's about the topic that you're learning about in science, for example, but you're still doing it, using it during your literacy block. So that little explore feature is super nice because you can search by topic, um, science, social, emotional, which is great for, you know, just getting the kids to relate to each other, social studies, math, and it looks like there's more topics here. So that is super helpful. Um, I believe, let me see if I remember here. You can also search by language. Um, I forget how to do that. Hopefully it'll, I'll, it'll show up here. Okay, there we go. So you can search by language here if you go to explore, see more topics. And if you happen to teach in Spanish or a different language, there are books that you can access here in those languages. And I will say, if you have an English language learner that is like brand new to the country, a brand newcomer, it's not a bad idea to still have them listening to, you know, once in a while, a book that's in their language because you can develop their content area knowledge, even if it's not in English. So if you have a brand newcomer, this might be a comfort for them that once in a while they get to listen to a book in Spanish when they're immersed in English for the entire day. Of course, if you're a bilingual dual language teacher, this is awesome too. So those are the things that you can um, search by. And there's, you know, you can also sort by category, which we'll, we'll talk more about in a second. Let me go back to explore here. I just want to show you really quick what is uh, super about the books when you actually look at the books. Jamie says you can assign books on science and social these topics, which is so amazing. Content knowledge, yes, so much. Let me just put a little plug in here for content knowledge. So much of kids' ability to comprehend text depends on their understanding of the topic the text is about. And this, this is particularly true with nonfiction. So not only do we need to be teaching our kids to read well, but also building, building, building that background knowledge. And the more nonfiction books and information they have access to, which Epic gives them a ton, the better they're going to be able to comprehend. So just a little comprehension background knowledge plug there. All right, let us look at what a book looks like. Now, some of them, it, you know, they, I think I was 
we were reading that book earlier. Um, I think some of them will, will look different because some of the books you can listen to. I'm showing you a book that I don't believe you can listen to, but I just kind of want to show you um, what it will look like. You will see the level and all that good stuff. And then it just looks like a normal book. So again, you can project this for like shared reading on the board or even read aloud. The kids can read this on their own. Another really cool feature, even if you've used Epic before, um, you may not know this, but let's like find a good word. Mammal. There is a built-in dictionary. So kids can actually, if you heard it, I don't know if it was loud enough on your uh, device, but if you heard it, it pronounced the word for them and it has a little definition. Now, some of the definitions, depending on how old the kids are, it might still be a little bit confusing, but at least they get to hear it, which is super helpful. And then, you know, depending on what your kid's reading level is, they may be able to read it and kind of understand what it is. Um, just kind of like in my Kindle, when I read on my Kindle, I can click on a word if I don't know what it is and it will tell me. So I think that's a super awesome feature. Um, also want to show you, this is really tiny and hard to see from this screen, but right up here, there's three little question marks. And if you click on those, and I'm again doing the teacher view, so I'm just doing what we see in our teacher login, um, you can get access to a quiz. And I don't know a ton about the quizzes yet. I think that's kind of a new feature, but with some of the quizzes I've seen that you can actually edit them for the kids. So that's super nice. But regardless, some of the books, many of the books have quizzes and you can have the kids take them after um, they read a book. So that's like a little bit of an accountability thing as well. And it's just fun. It's, you know, kid friendly. If you saw that little visual popped up there. Um, so that is something that's really great. Those quizzes, again, this is super for independent work because not only are you able to differentiate like, oh, I want this child to read that, but then you have that quiz to kind of encourage them to really pay attention to what they're reading. So that is an awesome feature. And that book I showed you didn't have the read to me feature, but many of them do. And this is awesome. Of course, it makes a great listening center. When you have English language learners or really any kids, it's so great for them to just listen to text read aloud. For English language learners, it familiarizes them with the language structures, the vocabulary, it builds, you know, non-English language learners vocabulary. Um, it helps them learn story grammars, which is just basically like when we're talking about fiction, like the way, you know, how there's like a problem and a solution. Fairy tales have a certain way of going. It just the more our kids read and listen to stories, the more familiar they become with how stories work and how books work. And that's a really good thing. Um, and then also, let's just pick a book here. The nice thing about this is that there's not, there's, it's already reading to us. Okay, I'm going to pause it. Um, there's not only one way to, to enjoy the book. So the kids can listen to the book. They can hear it read, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'll just, I'll turn it on for, for us just for a minute. I'm on the TV, shouts Ricky. No, I'm watching my show. It highlights, if you can see it, it's actually highlighting the text as it's reading it, which is really great for so many reasons, teaching words, teaching concept of words, so even kindergartners, you know, the, the concept that like one spoken word is one written word. So that highlighting or that whatever you want to call it, where it makes the word bigger is really um, amazing. And then the one thing that I would recommend for fluency is that after you have kids listen to a story, they can go back and they can actually like turn the audio off or whatever and just read the story. Um, yeah, it's not going to play automatically. They can go back and read the same story after they've already listened to it. So that builds their fluency. So this can not only be a listening center, but it can also be fluency practice because then they can go back and read it. They can even read it to a partner. There's the uh, options are endless here. Another thing I want to show you, where did this go? I thought I had this up on, it disappeared. Um, so before, I don't know where this went. Well, we were talking about engaging reluctant readers earlier and somewhere in here, I totally lost it, but somewhere in here there are, um, there's a bunch of comics which, or graphic novels, depending on uh, what level it is, what, what kind of thing it is. Um, but I don't think this is an example. It's a regular book. 
apologies that I can't find this because I swear I just had it. Um, maybe somebody can tell me where this is located, but there are comics in here and that is really, really exciting for your reluctant readers. Um, not to make generalizations, but sometimes boys enjoy comics, even if they're not enjoying regular books. Again, not to make generalizations. I have uh, just, I have a fourth grader that I was working with just the other day. She's a girl, absolutely loves comics, so it's not just restricted to boys, but generally speaking, sometimes if you have a child who is a little bit more reluctant to read books, then comics can be really engaging for them. So comics are in there. Again, apologies for not being able to find where it is. I literally just had it a second ago. There are learning videos, and this is helpful for, again, your content areas, which we talked about before, but it's also helpful for research. If you remember, I mentioned that Epic can be really useful for, for getting kids to research on their own because it's really hard to find nonfiction books or at least a lot of nonfiction books on a topic for like at a first grade reading level. So I like to have my kids, you know, choose different topics. Like you're gonna read about sharks and you're gonna read about whales and you're gonna read about something else entirely that is so motivating for them and then they get to write about it. But if you're having trouble finding books, you can supplement with some books and even some of these learning videos from Epic. So it allows kids to do research on their own, which if you're writing informational books or nonfiction books and your kids are like, I don't know what to write about, can be really helpful because this gives them stuff to write about and they can do research on their own. So that's extremely helpful. It's also just nice because with YouTube, you have to kind of worry like, oh, is this kid friendly? Like, what about these ads? But of course, this stuff is all appropriate and kid friendly and safe and all that good stuff. Another little feature I wanna show you, and this is super for getting kids to practice visualizing and their listening comprehension. They have these audio books here. And you know, most of the books, like they have pictures, you can listen to the, the story while you see the pictures, but the audio books are a little bit different because... John, Eve, Lois, I don't know how you can see this, or uh, hear this. K, Max, Sue. There are no images that are being shown and the kids just listen. And this is not something that I usually necessarily assign as independent work, but what I like to do is I like to, I like for us to use it whole group, also a nice break for your voice if you're losing your voice, and we can all listen. I can pause it when I wanna pause and we can talk about what the kids are visualizing or imagining as they're listening to the story. So it kind of removes that, you know, the picture and whatever, they're having to come up with something in their mind. You can also have them draw what they're imagining. That's a way to assess and also a way to, for them just to like solidify their visualizations. But these audiobooks are nice because you're getting the kids to listen to something, but there's no pictures. And so that requires like another level of comprehension. And also, again, it's great for working on visualization. So, so many different uses. Jamie loves Epic just like I do. She was listing some of the ways that she uses it and I would love to hear if you use it for any other things. Um, just practically speaking, I wanna show you. So again, this is just a demo account. I don't have all my kids in here, um, but you can see your students in here. It looks like there's an, a Google Classroom import, which is awesome. I don't use Google Classroom, but what I wanna show you is that if you find a book and you're like, oh my goodness, I want this child to read it or this is perfect for this child, you can assign it. And you can assign it two ways. One way is, or maybe there's more and I just don't know. One way is just by hovering over the book if you happen to see it here and you can click assign and then like I could assign it to Harper, assign, easy. You can assign it to multiple students that way or just one. But then the other way to assign it is to go up here and I know it's very small on your screen. Blue. Oops, it's reading to us. You can assign it when you are in the book. So that is another um, super helpful option. And again, great for differentiation because you can say, you know, hey, I want you to read this. I want you to read that. I do love give, to give my kids choice, but I also love for there to be opportunities when I say, hey, this is a good level for you. I want you to read this. Differentiating independent work can take forever, but not with Epic. Awesome, Jamie was talking about assigning books. Super, Lori says she just started using it this week. Wonderful. All right, so let's make sure that we talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, looking at my list, we talked about engaging reluctant readers, which obviously it's, it's kind of, it's just the fact that it's interactive and it's almost like 
Um, it's like Netflix where it's recommending books for the kids. They get to choose what they're interested in. That's super for engaging reluctant readers. You've got the comics, which again, I apologize. I couldn't find them for some reason, but they are in here. Um, they get to listen. That's amazing. It's great for helping kids expand their vocabulary, whether you are um, just having the kids Picture learn so, so it's really just, um, from, you know, listening to it, or if you're having the kids click, Taste. hearing words, seeing the definition, that's another way to great way to work on vocabulary. We talked about how it's so helpful for English language learners. If you have any kids, especially newcomers who come in and they're just really not able to do a lot in English at first, this is an option that, you know, it, you can have them listen, and there's a couple of different languages, but you can also, of course, have them listen in English, and that is just so great for exposure to the language. Um, it's also, you know, not all of our kids get read to at home, and so we have limited time in our schedule where we can read aloud to the kids, super important, and it's something that I would do every day, but this is another opportunity for them to be read to, which, again, they may not, may or may not be getting at home, so that's a really great feature. Um, you can assign independent work, like I talked about, differentiated, you can search by level. Even if you are just like, okay, like I need a book at this level for the whole class, this is a great way to find what you need. Um, research, because there's so much content area stuff in here, you can incorporate it into your science and social studies instruction, integrate that into the literacy block, but also have the kids do research. We talked about fluency practice. Um, Listening helps with fluency, but then they can read a book that they listen to again, go back through and turn the audio off. So that's amazing for, for fluency, excuse me. And then those audio books that don't have pictures are so great for working on visualization and listening comprehension because the kids are required to imagine what's going on in their mind. Then you can have them discuss and draw what they're hearing. All right, so those are all the ideas I have to share. If you have something to share, I would love to hear it. If you have not signed up for Epic, I would absolutely encourage you to go do it now because this is free. It is so amazing that they've made this free to us and it's super high quality, right? Like these are really great books. There are some big authors, big titles in here. There's some like, you know, seasonal stuff. It just, it makes our life so much easier because <clears throat> You know, it's time consuming to go to the library. And of course, the library is a great resource, not knocking the library, but we have so much on our plates. And this is just one way for us to get access to more books, which I always need more books. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. And I hope you go to get Epic and sign up for your free account if you haven't today, because I promise you will love it. And you can let me know in the comments if you have any questions.